One of the biggest questions is whether or not there is life on other planets aside from Earth. However, Venus is generally ranked as one of astronomy's greatest telescopic disappointments, despite its dazzling appearance to the naked eye. There isn't much to view other than the changing phases and the beautiful all-pervading cloud deck. Scientists have been baffled by Venusian clouds for decades now. They raise some of the most intriguing concerns our solar system has to offer, including the potential that life may have already begun on Venus's now hostile surface before evolving to thrive solely in the clouds. Recent attempts to explain them have yielded intriguing possibilities. What could they possibly be? And is there really life thriving in the clouds of Venus? Let's find out. With blistering temperatures, powerful winds and volcanic activity, Venus is a planet of extremes due to its vast atmosphere, which is mainly carbon dioxide. Despite the planet's unfriendly surface, the availability of sunlight, nutrients and water in the form of clouds may provide a more suitable environment for some microorganisms, leading to the theory that habitable zones exist in the planet's upper atmosphere. But Venus hasn't always been such a hot mess. The planet's environment once included both active volcanoes and oceans filled with liquid water. They may have been home to life for approximately 3 billion years. Conditions on Venus were most likely comparable to those on Earth when life originated. With a more powerful intensity, the Sun radiated the planet at a lower intensity in these early days. Venus began to heat up some 3.5 billion years after its birth, and its oceans began to evaporate with time. The planet's dense and heated atmosphere was created by a runaway greenhouse effect that trapped more of the Sun's rays in the atmosphere. Pressures on Venus's surface are more than 90 times higher than those on Earth, and the planet's surface temperature is hot enough to melt lead. While most life on Earth would perish under these conditions, microscopic and hardy microbes, known as extremophiles, have exceptional skills to thrive in the most hostile environments. Because of the planet's constant and destructive volcanic activity, scientists doubt the existence of fossils on Venus's surface. However, satellites in orbit around Venus have provided a view into the planet's atmosphere, revealing hints of possible life that may be floating around in the planet's small pockets of the sky. Many space missions have been launched to study Venus since the 1960s. When the Pioneer Venus Orbiter and Multiprobe missions were launched in 1978, they provided scientists with an unprecedented access to Venus's upper atmosphere and its various layers, all the way down to the planet's surface. In 1981, the Venera 13 and 14 missions returned color panoramas of the planet's surface, information on its clouds and soil, and the first ever recording of winds on the surface of the planet. Many further observations of the planet's surface and atmosphere were made with the Vega 1 and 2 balloons and landers in the following years. Data on the planet's spectral properties have also been acquired by scientists, which estimate how much light is reflected or absorbed by Venus. Chemical fingerprints, such as carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, can be identified using these data. Some spectral observations from Venus reveal significant and puzzling black patches in its cloud layers, indicating locations of high absorption. The presence of trace water, energy and nutrients like carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus and sulfur in the clouds has led scientists to speculate that microorganisms could be the source of that solar energy absorption, much like algal patches in Earth's oceans or lakes. Venus may have the capacity to support iron and sulfur-based metabolism. The mass balance of particles in Venus's lower clouds is sufficient to support microbes, water and solutes as well as potentially enough biomass to be identified using optical methods. Astronomers have discovered evidence that the atmosphere of Venus contains a lot of phosphine, a molecule that is mostly created by life on Earth. Although the findings are debatable, they raise concerns about life on our sister planet. There are, however, some issues with the theory of microbes living in the clouds of Venus that have yet to be solved. For life to have evolved on Venus, 
Oceans, or at the very least, surface lakes and puddles must have once existed. As a result, the planet's surface has been reformed throughout the past few hundred million years by simultaneous volcanic eruptions of huge igneous provinces. As a result, researching its past is extremely challenging. Assuming that microbial life existed on Venus at some point in its past, despite the planet's current state as a Dantian inferno, is it possible that microbes may have taken a ride on a thermal stream and developed to exist at extremely high altitudes? Even though Earth's microbes can float in the atmosphere for days, they must return to the ground to reproduce. However, microorganisms on Venus may have developed in response to changing atmospheric conditions. Life always finds a way, doesn't it? According to scientists, microorganisms may have migrated from the planet's surface to the planet's atmosphere as it became more hostile. This could explain why microbes are moving around. Around 60 kilometers or 38 miles above the planet's surface, atmospheric pressures are equivalent to Earth's and Venus's dense clouds block some of the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation resulting in milder conditions. On Earth, extremophiles have been discovered to endure and even thrive under similar environments. Scientists have been forced to examine more thoroughly what could cause these signs, which go beyond conventional atmospheric and chemical interactions. Venus's atmosphere, according to scientists, is capable of producing similar balanced zones compared to Earth. Scientists discovered in one of their researches that the Venusian atmosphere could allow phototrophy or the ability of organisms to harvest sunlight for energy. The recent assertion that phosphine has been detected in Venus's clouds has sparked a lot of controversy in the scientific community. This is because phosphine is produced on Earth by microbes and phosphine production necessitates a reducing atmosphere, one that reduces oxygen. Reducing substances such as methane, ammonia, amino acids and other reducing chemicals oxidize in an atmosphere. For a gas like phosphine to exist in Venus's clouds, it must be replenished in some way. However, the specifics of how are still up in the air. The presence of phosphine as well as traces of several other compounds are consistent with the presence of a reducing atmosphere which Venusian microorganisms could use to support the metabolic process. This is supported by a recent analysis of data obtained for Venus's middle cloud layers by the Pioneer Venus mission in 1978. Some scholars, on the other hand, argue that the phosphine surplus might be explained by volcanic eruptions on the surface or lightning strikes in the clouds. We don't know exactly what's going on in Venus's clouds at this point. In any event, the concept that they could someday be inhabited is no longer considered far-fetched. Scientists since the 1960s have undertaken roughly 50 missions to explore our neighboring planet with different degrees of success. Of course, it was one of the factors that pushed NASA planners to approve two spacecraft for Earth's twin planet lately. The missions are called Veritas and Da Vinci and will launch between 2028 and 2030. In particular, as it descends through the clouds towards the surface, Da Vinci will collect profiles on the trace chemicals present in the Venusian atmosphere, including probable UV absorbers. As an extra, the Russian space agency Roscosmos is working with NASA on a launch of Venera D in 2028 or 2029 as well. Three more missions would be launched in the 2030s, the last of which would bring back a sample of the surface of Venus. Meanwhile, the European Space Agency has given its approval to Envision, a mission that will map the planet's surface topography and composition, comparable to Veritas. Venus, which has long been overlooked in comparison to Earth's other neighbors, is going to become quite active. These missions may finally provide conclusive proof of the existence of the enigmatic UV absorbers in Venus's clouds. As long as we can identify them, whether they are organic or inorganic, we will be at the end of a long trail that began with the earlier scientists that researched the planet. Even so, the odd aspects of Venus will undoubtedly draw images and visual viewers to the telescope for years to come. 
Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more amazing videos about space.